So that wasn't easy, but that was the warm up to the real question, which is part three. So we're both gonna have to think about this. Let M be the midpoint of the chord PQ by considering the quadrilateral, oh, that's not too bad, uh, P, Q, L, K, or otherwise. Show that M, K equals M, L. All right, so there's a lot there. Um, the quadrilateral P, Q, L, uh, P, Q, L, K, I haven't got on my diagram, so I'm gonna draw it right now, okay? P, Q is there, L, K is there, so now I'm just gonna try and emphasize that. Okay, now, this question, uh, by the way, I now know this is a right angle, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna yep. solidify that. This question, part three, is all about vision. Once, as soon as you see it, you're like, oh, it's obvious. The algebra just kind of falls out, right? Now, we therefore need to stare really hard, and that's why I'm going to so much effort to like, make this diagram a good diagram. Yeah. When we think about PQLK, what kind of a quadrilateral is it? Hmm. Now, uh, I can see from part one and two, all I've really established is these two right angles. That's really all I've done, okay? Um, and it doesn't really look like, it's not, it's not a rectangle, not a square, not a parallelogram, but you've got these guys. Now you need to think really hard. We've learned about, you learned about almost all the kinds of quadrilaterals you need to know about, basically in year seven, but in this most recent year, you've learnt about another kind of quadrilateral that's different, which you can't learn about back then. And it has to do with these two angles in here. When you've got those two right angles, and it's in a quadrilateral, what kind of quadrilateral would it be? Hmm. This is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, think about this. It's cyclic. But how can I actually prove that? Because they say show, right? We're considering the quadrilateral. We've worked out, yes, it is cyclic, but how would I prove that it is the case? What is it about, like, these guys that makes it cyclic? You think for a second, can I rub this off? Uh, yeah. Or do you wanna, yeah, do you wanna take a picture? Uh, or, I think I got it all yeah, okay, it's not that hard this stuff. Um, what's the definition of a cyclic quadrilateral? What's the definition? Very good. If you have a cyclic quadrilateral, all points, um, all uh, corners, vertices is the technical word, but anyway, all corners are on the circumference of a circle. Now, if that is true, then I should be able to draw a circle. It's gonna be a bad circle, but I'm gonna do my best shot, right? I should be able to draw a circle that goes all the way through. So I'm just gonna imagine, I think it'll look something like this. Uh, okay, there you go. It's a pretty horrendous circle, but it's good enough, okay? Now, uh, what property am I going to use that shows that this is a, quad a cyclic quadrilateral? Now, um, there are a couple of main properties of cyclic quads that I know. Um, the opposite angles in a cyclic quad are what? Um, opposite angles. Uh, They're, so for example, if I have a, one like this, right? Um, this angle and this angle, right? They're clearly not equal, yeah. are they? Right, and I could make it like fatter up here and they would not be equal, but that's still cyclic. Yeah. So what's the relationship between them? Um, they add up to 180 degrees, so they're supplementary. Right? Now, that's like the main quality we use about cyclic quads, but I can't use that directly here because I don't know what any of the angles in the corners are, right? I don't know that angle. I know some of this angle, but not the whole thing. Yeah. So these angles are not angles of the cyclic quadrilateral. They're angles in the cyclic quadrilateral. So how else can I use it? Have a look at the, um, have a look at that uh, big circle that I'm trying to draw on the outside, right? When you look at these two right angles, what do they make you think of in this circle? They're, they're, they're triangles there, right? I'm gonna track forward a little further, look back at the question. They tell us that MK equals ML. 
Where are MK and ML? Yep, there's MK. There's ML, right? Now, have a look. K and L are on the circumference of the circle. So what are these lines in this circle? They, they must be radii. Do you see that? Like, I don't know, I haven't proved that they are, but, but they must be, right? Like, how else am I going to do this? So if they are radii, then M is the middle of this chord here. That makes PQ a special chord. What kind of chord is it? It's, it's, it's a diameter, right? It, that, that's why M, which is the center of it, is the center of the whole circle, okay? So let me try and tie all of these um, threads together. Okay, so this is part three. I'm going to say PLQ, which is what I was looking at the previous part, it's equal to uh, PKQ, like so, okay? But that means that K and L are on the circumference, and P and Q, are on the circumference of a circle because do you see that they are angles standing on the same arc, yeah. on arc PQ, right? So since this is true, I can say P, Q, K, uh, and L are, do you remember the word? There's a word that starts with um, C that means they're all in the same circle. It's um, con cyclic. The reason why they're concyclic is because of this, the angles standing on arc, what's it called? What's this arc? PQ, right? Do you see it upside down? On arc PQ are equal. Okay, so that tells me, okay, it's a cyclic quad, right? Do you see it now? Yeah. But if it's a cyclic quad, and if you have a look at, say, um, PLQ, right, that's not just any angle in this circle, it's an angle that's 90 degrees. In, an, in a circle, what angle is 90 degrees? Um, the angle in a what is 90 degrees? You actually said it before, it was to do with this line being a special line. This is a diameter, right? So we call this guy, this guy, um, see how that's a semicircle, two semicircles? So we call it the angle in a semicircle. Does that ring a bell? Right? So I can say, um, uh, but angle PLQ is 90 degrees, therefore angle PLQ is the angle in a semicircle, because it's 90 degrees, right? Uh, and if you draw a 90 degree angle in a circle anywhere, you find the diameter. We're used to doing it the other way around. We're used to saying, hey, here's a diameter. Now find an angle, anyone you like. But if you had a random circle, right, and just, just make a 90 degree angle anywhere. Just put like a random line over here and then, and then go 90 degrees like that. You have found the diameter, right? Yeah. Um, so many properties in circles, they go both ways, okay? So therefore, P or Q is the angle in a semicircle. Right? Um, but that means that PQ is the diameter. If PQ is the diameter, M, which is the center of the diameter, is the center of the entire circle because the center of any diameter is the center of the circle. Okay? M's the center. I've already shown that K and L are on the circumference. Therefore, this is the last line. MK and ML must both be equal because they are radii. Okay. So, oh, my brain. Uh, what makes this question hard? Quite a few things. For starters, um, the this is actually this is what the HSC does. Uh, this is what makes HSC questions so hard. Um, this is not. It's actually not just a parametrics question. It is clearly multiple topics, yeah. right? Um, you got the parametrics in there in part one and two. And then in part three, just have a look at my working. There's no parametrics here. It's completely circle geometry. And not only is it circle geometry, it's hard circle geometry, right? We're used to being given diameters and finding the angles, but we're now asking you to go in reverse, 